Welcome to 6.2. We're now talking about the normal distribution. Normal has a very special meaning here. Many real life problems produce a continuous probability distribution. You can imagine that as a histogram that's just divided up into infinitely many pieces. That is symmetric, unimodal, so it has one peak, and bell-shaped. For example, height, blood pressure, IQ, and cholesterol level are known to be normally distributed. Now that's important because at this point in the book, we are going to need to do several things. And one of them is if we want to use the methods of this chapter, if we want to find probabilities by using a normal graph, we need to show that they're normal. With these exceptions, if we're talking about height, blood pressure, IQ, or cholesterol level, you don't have to show that they are normal. Now, one of the things I do want to say about this idea is IQ is normal because the results are normalized. So when we say that IQ is normal, think of that as like a brand name. There's a particular way of assessing people's responses to exams. Notice I'm not using the word intelligence. That produces a normal distribution. Now, we liken that to intelligence, but the way the test is designed tells you more about the test giver than the test taker in many situations. So we're going to say IQ, we're going to say that it's normally distributed, but we're not going to take on with it any of the baggage that that's telling us a lot about intelligence. It's telling us how well we do on standardized exams, how well we fit the dominant culture. However, not every bell-shaped curve is a normal curve. So just by looking at something that has one peak and is symmetric isn't enough. We're going to talk about the tests for a normal curve at the end of the chapter. In a normal curve, there is a specific relationship between its height and its width. So take a look at this normal curve. There's valleys and there's hills. Now let's talk about that because this is very powerful. This comes to us from calculus. We're talking about a valley on the left side of one standard deviation to the left. So we're saying that the curve is shaped like a valley in this section. Now what that means is it's increasing as we go to the right. In mathematics, we always talk as we're going to the right. As you go to the right, we're increasing at an increasing rate. So rewind that 20 seconds if you need to. After that point, we're still increasing, but now increasing at a decreasing rate. Notice that it's falling off as it rises up there towards the vertex. There is then a flat point when it is instantaneously horizontal, so neither going up nor down right at the mean, and then decreasing at an increasing rate from the mean to one standard deviation to the right. That's still a hill, but decreasing at an increasing rate, and then after that decreasing at a decreasing rate. It has to be decreasing at a decreasing rate or it would smash through the x-axis. Now notice that I've talked about the peak here as being at the mean, and that's exactly right. The peak is at the population mean mu. And when you draw these, or when you think about these, one standard deviation to the right takes us to that point where the curve stops behaving one way, like a valley, and becomes behaving like a hill as we move from left to right. So one standard deviation takes us to these important points. These are inflection points. Inflection points is a calculus term, and it tells us that there's a change in the rate of change of the curve. So one standard deviation to the right and one standard deviation to the left give us that change. If you've done any sketching or any art, you know that there is in your hand, you have to kind of change where your elbow is, where your wrist is, depending on how broad a curve you're drawing, and pull against or towards your wrist. This is also a calculus topic. This is basically about change. So if you've ever heard the word derivatives in the context of the 2008 economic crash, 
that was exactly this, the idea of looking at the rate of change of things. Another thing I should point out is that the curve never actually touches the horizontal. So in an intermediate algebra class, that would have been called asymptotic. That's the same situation here, always closer, but never there. So now let's do this again in words. The center or the highest point is at the population mean mu. The inflection or transition points are the places where the curve changes from a hill to a valley, from increasing at an increasing rate to increasing at a decreasing rate. The distance from the mean to the inflection point or the transition point is one standard deviation. Now, this one is true for every distribution that we're going to talk about. The area under the whole curve is exactly one. Therefore, the area under or below the mean is one half. Now, that's a nice geometric intuition. When we do divide the curve into two pieces, left and right of the mean, they're each an area of one half. And that should agree with your understanding of the population mean. If you are less than the population mean, that happens half the time. If you're more than the population mean, that happens half the time. The next page reminds us that equality does nothing for us with probabilities. So if you're asked to look at a probability that is a strict inequality versus a probability that says or equal to, they are the same. In terms of probabilities, finding the probability that the random variable is in and includes the endpoints is the same as asking for the probability that the random variable x is strictly between the endpoints. So for example, the probability of being taller than six feet and the probability of being six feet tall or taller is exactly the same. And that's true because no one is exactly six feet tall. Now let's get back to this idea that the probability of an event is an area. If we're interested in finding the probability that the random variable x is between a and b, we're interested in finding the area between A and B under this curve. So what's shaded in this normal curve is the probability we want to find. Now you might say that looks an awful lot like a binomial distribution. Maybe we could use those techniques. But because this has been made continuous, E actually comes into play, the base natural log from intermediate algebra. And because of that, and because we're doing calculus, we're going to have our calculator actually compute these areas for us. But before we do, it's useful to memorize some of these results for different numbers of standard deviations from the mean. This is called the empirical rule, and it basically allows us to memorize different intervals. This is only true for normal distributions. Remember Shabayshev's theorem? Shabayshev's theorem was true for anything. It's true for normal distributions, but for other distributions as well. That was the first big mathematical result in statistics. This is basically a calculus result. In a calculus class, students would be asked to approximate each of these as a way of just playing with the intervals. So approximately 68% of the data is within one standard deviation of the mean. Approximately 95% of the data is within two standard deviations of the mean. Approximately 99.7% of the data is within three standard deviations of the mean. This is an excellent thing to remember. Remembering this is valuable in so many ways. When you're outside of a statistics class and you know the standard standard deviation, you can use that in your head to say, well, one standard deviation to the right, one standard deviation to the left gives you an interval that encloses 68% of the data, and so on. Here's the empirical rule again, shown geometrically. Instead of shading this time, because the shading would overlap for these three cases, we're simply using arrows. So 68% is within one standard deviation of the mean. Notice that that means one standard deviation to the right and one standard deviation to the left. 95% of the data is within two standard deviations and 99.7% of the data is within three standard deviations.